Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. Today, I'm gonna to be trying out this first release puzzle from a brand new Australian company called Pennywinks. I'm gonna be unboxing the puzzle, piecing it together, and I'll give you my first impressions as well as my final thoughts towards the end of the video. Also, just to clarify, this video is in no way sponsored and I purchased this puzzle with my own money. So, who are Pennywinks? Well, Pennywinks is an Australian company. They're based right here in Sydney. And from what I can tell, they formed around October last year and have since been spending the time developing and creating this first puzzle. And this puzzle was just released recently on the 18th of September, 21. Um, so at the moment, uh, this puzzle is only available to an Australian audience, but they do intend to release it in the future to a US and UK audience as well. Um, they do have a website, but for now, the uh, puzzle is only available on Amazon. So this puzzle is called The Witch's Lair, and it features a detailed, whimsical fantasy setting. According to their website, they do have a couple more puzzles in the works, which will also feature a sort of fantasy style or setting. Something that I think really sets them apart from quite a few other brands is that they have their own mascot. So this mascot is called the Pennywinks and it appears to be a very fantastical goblin-esque type creature and it goes around wearing a very cool dapper top hat. Um, apparently this Pennywinks creature can also be found in hiding in every one of their puzzles. So I think that's a very fun and cool little detail that just makes Pennywinks a bit more of a special puzzle company. So now that we know a bit more about Pennywinks, I think it's time to do the unboxing. So I've already removed the shrink wrap just to make things easier. So let's have a quick look first at the box itself. Um, it's square and it's quite chunky um, and solid, um, but still pretty uh, compact in size and shape. So easy to store on your bookshelf. Um, also easy to throw into a bag if you wanna take it with you on holidays or something like that. Um, the front has like, of course, essential things like your logo, which is quite cute. The Witch's Lair, the name of the puzzle. Um, it's a thousand pieces. And the artwork itself looks very cool, like lots of pinks and purples, bright pops of green, blue, little flames. And like the name suggests, it has lots of like witchy type things. So witches and skeletons and spells, potions cauldrons, cats, <laughs> you name it, anything kind of witchy I can kind of see in there. So yeah, the, the name and the artwork seem to go together quite well. Uh, but yeah, looks very fun. I think I'm gonna have a good time putting this one together. And on the back, it's pretty much got, again, a, just a picture of the puzzle artwork, but it also shows um, the mascot, the Pennywinks character. So I guess you know it, what the character looks like and what to look out for when trying to find this character in the puzzle itself. And has a bit of social media and it seems to have a blurb that, um, so it says, enter if you dare this time, the Pennywinks has been teleported to the Witch's Lair, the most prestigious research and development facility in all of Witchesdom the birthplace of witchcraft. Um, so I won't go into reading all of it, but essentially it sort of sets the scene for like where the puzzle is located, I guess. So um, yeah, so that's kind of nice. And then on the four sides of the box, again, we've just got the sort of essential puzzle information, logos, piece count size, barcodes. Uh, it has a QR code on some, a couple of the sides. So I'm guessing that takes you to the website, but I'm not 100% sure. And oh, and something else that's interesting to note, the size here is a little bit bigger than um, standard 1000 piece puzzles. Um, standard 1000 piece puzzles are usually 70 centimeters by 50, but this one's 75 by 52. So it is a little bit bigger. Um, I apologize to those who need inches. I don't know what the conversion is. Um, anyway, um, now that we've sort of seen that, let's, let's open it up. Oh, I should mention as well that the box, ugh, okay, it's a little bit tight, but the texture of the cardboard is sort of a, it's quite sturdy, but is a nice like glossy kind of finish. 
but yeah, pretty nice. All right, so um, it comes in a little plastic bag. It doesn't, doesn't appear to be a reusable bag. Um, so we will have to cut that open in a minute. And the other thing that comes in here is, oh, okay, so we've got a leaflet here, but one side is a little reference poster of the artwork. So it's not the biggest poster, like maybe it could be bigger, but I do feel like I can see the details probably well enough. They're definitely bigger than on the front of the box. So that's good. Um, also has more of the sort of socials social media type things up here. And then, okay, on the inside, there's a whole lot of information. So looks like there's some stuff about the company, more social media. Um, oh, it talks about who is the Penny Wink, so who the mascot is. And okay, and more about the witch's lair, like the setting that the puzzle takes place in. So yeah, I won't read all that now, but uh, yeah, at least it seems quite informative. So that's good. Uh, yeah, so that's what we get with the puzzle. Um, there's no like nothing else. It's pretty simple, but yeah, I do appreciate that it comes with a reference picture. So I don't have to just squint at the tiny details on the box. So let's open this up and have a look at what the pieces are like. Let's try not to spill any of these. Success. Oh, also, it's kind of a little but nice touch that it has their Penny Minks logo printed all over the bag. So that's cool. It is a shame that it's not reusable. It would be nice if this was even just like a Ziploc bag with the logo, like that would have been cool or even better, a fabric bag. But oh, well, is what it is. Um, OK, so wow. All right. To me, um, the pe oh, these are quite nice. So they have that sort of blue board on the back, like that kind of cardboard, which I qu quite like. Um, so there's no paper backing, which I think is I prefer because it means that you're less likely to get peeling occurring. And the pieces themselves are like fairly chunky and thick. Um, yeah, they seem very sturdy. They look really nice. And then the, the top of the pieces, hmm, they're very smooth feeling actually. I, I was expecting them to be more like a linen finish because I'm sure that's what it said on the website, but I don't know. I don't think I would consider this linen. It is like, it's quite a smooth and it, it's definitely very anti-glare. So that's good. It's not glossy, um, but it feels very, almost feels like it has like a gloss coating, but it's not it's not glossy or reflective at all so that's really good um yeah so i don't know how you what you would call this coating but i personally don't think it's linen i could be wrong though i'm not an expert on these things this is just from my own experience um, but so far i really i really like how these look the colors look very vibrant um yeah they just the pieces feel nice i personally don't know if I don't think the pieces are that much bigger than your standard jigsaw pieces. Um, like, because obviously if the puzzle's a bit bigger than a standard 1000 piece, I was expecting the pieces to be a bit bigger, but maybe overall they're a tiny bit bigger, but not to me, not noticeably so. Like, I, they don't seem outlandishly big or anything like that, but they, yeah, they seem very comfortable to hold. I can see the details. The printing looks very good. Um, yeah, let's see. As for puzzle dust, um, at the moment I can't see too much in the bottom of the box. Like my hands feel a teeny bit dusty touching them, but I can't see any like chunks of puzzle dust or anything like that. So, so fingers crossed, my sinuses stay happy. Um, yeah, but I think that's that's about it. Um, these look really really good. There's a few stuck together, but that's pretty normal. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to putting this together and trying it out. Um, brand new company, brand new puzzle, so no idea what, what the experience is going to be like. Um, but I have high hopes since the pieces seem like really nice quality. Um, and the picture looks really fun and I love the colours so far. So yeah, let's, let's get into puzzling and try this out.
It's next day now and I thought before I get back into puzzling, let's have a quick chat about how the puzzle and my puzzling experience has been so far. Uh, last night I spent a good few hours working on this and so far I've really enjoyed it. Um, the image is like full of fun, like really whimsical, cool details. Um, yeah, it's like so many cool details that I've like discovered that I didn't even realize were there which I didn't spot on the box or the reference image at first. So yeah, that's been really fun, like putting this together and then going, oh, like that's like a little character there or something's going on here. So yeah, some really cool little ideas and stories and like super cool characters. And yeah, I'm really liking the colors as well. Um, just love these sort of pinks and teals and purples, greens, like looks great. Um, yeah, so that's been really cool. Um, the piece quality has been excellent. So just has, Beautiful smooth finish, um, really nice to touch and definitely anti-glare. So like a very matte anti-glare finish, which is great because I find the light I work under tends to like leave spot reflections on a lot of my puzzles. So that's been super, super helpful putting this together. Um, the piece fits really good. It's a very comfortable fit. It's not too tight. It's definitely not loose. Um, so here I'll undo this section. So it's pretty easy to get sections apart, which is good. It means you're not gonna like damage your pieces when you take, like when you're moving sections or like you wanna pack this away, you're not gonna like damage the pieces trying to like pry them apart. So yeah, it comes, to get, it comes undone pretty well. But that being said, it also holds together very well. So like this is a pretty large section I would say and like, yeah, holds together very well. So that's great, um, especially for short armed people like myself who prefer to work on things in front of them and then lift them up or slide them over to like their allocated spot afterwards. Uh, super helpful. Like, yeah, I can just work on a big area and then move it to wherever I need to. So really appreciate that. Um, yeah, nothing worse than like having super loose uh, piece fit and then like it all falls apart when you try to move it. So yeah, that's really good. Um, I'd say the only sort of downside with the pieces, well, it's not even the pieces, it's just that there's the tiniest bit of puzzle dust. Um, it's absolutely not a problem for me. Um, I haven't found myself sneezing or anything like that. So just the tiniest bit, this amount doesn't bother me at all. So I don't think it would like really cause anyone much of a problem. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I've really, really enjoyed this puzzling experience. I'd say the only couple of downsides at the moment are, um, I wish that this reference image was larger because, because of the nature of this puzzle being so detailed and having lots of very tiny details as well. Um, I've had to like refer back to this picture a lot, like especially this, with trying to find, place the smaller pieces, the smaller details. I've had to look at this like almost continuously. So, Sometimes I do find myself trying to like squint, trying to, I mean, I probably need glasses, but squint trying to find like where things go. So just the amount I need to use this, I think it would have been helpful to be maybe twice the size or just a fraction bigger would help a lot. Uh, but you know, it's, it was fine. I still managed to figure out where things went, but you know, might just be easier to have it a larger size. And then the only other thing, is as you can probably tell I've already placed the bright sort of very distinct parts of the puzzle so that unfortunately means that all these ones in the box here are very dark and non-distinct so I don't know if I'm gonna have as much fun placing these ones I think some of them the, the amount of detail on them is not distinct enough or not um, yeah, identifiable enough that I'm going to easily be able to figure out where it goes. Um, so I think for some of these like sections I haven't done yet, it might be more a case of like piece shape rather than the image on the piece. Um, but you know, that happens in puzzles. Like, you know, I don't think any puzzle is perfect in that sense. There's always going to be like dead space or like too much of one color or something like that in puzzles. But I mean, I think overall so far, they've done a great job at like putting a lot of really fun details in. So there was always gonna be some areas that just aren't gonna have as much detail or as much color. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm really enjoying it. And 
yeah, I'm looking forward to getting it back into it now and I will talk to you after it's done. So now that I've finished this puzzle, I'm going to give you my final thoughts. Overall, I had a really enjoyable and pleasant puzzling experience. Um, I thought the artwork was really fantastic, um, really fun, uh, vibrant, colourful and really whimsical, fun little characters and details to be found. So yeah, heaps of details and I definitely discovered more and more details as I kept puzzling. Um, details that I didn't initially see on the box or the reference picture. So that was really fun to make these like extra little discoveries of strange and wonderful quirky things like witches claws and like little like, I guess, like lizards and fairies and snakes in buckets, like weird, wonderful things I could never have thought of, but here they are. Um, and I love the color scheme, like these beautiful, uh, vibrant, rich magentas and purples, teals. Yeah, really beautiful artwork. Um, and the other thing, of course, that made a great puzzling experience was this puzzle's quality. Like, it's just really nice to touch, very smooth, matte finish, um, anti-glare, so that's fantastic. And of course, the piece fit was really good. Um, the pieces fit together really comfortably, not too tight, not too loose. Um, I could pick up sections very easily and move them around um, but I could still undo pieces if I wanted without like any damage um, and oh and no false fits so that's a bonus I'd say the main um, maybe the only real issue I had with the puzzling experience was um, just the most minuscule tiniest amount of puzzle dust which really isn't an issue at all if you ask me like not this amount it's not at all bothersome I'm pretty sure it wouldn't really bother anyone else out there so it's probably not even worth mentioning um, and then the only other thing really is that I found the reference picture to be kind of a little bit on the small side considering you are looking for, for like lots of tiny details they were a bit small to see in here so I kind of personally wish this was a bit bigger but that's just personal preference like maybe this is fine for you maybe you don't even want a reference picture I don't know um, yeah so a couple other things about the uh, puzzle is, like I said, the artwork's really fun and whimsical, but it's also really kind of spooky and supernatural. So I think it'd make a really cool and fun puzzle to do for Halloween, actually. And that's just coming up around the corner. So yeah, maybe this could be your 2021 Halloween puzzle. Um, and yeah, and it wasn't, the other thing is that it wasn't the easiest puzzle to put together. It was a little bit challenging, so which is good. Keeps me entertained and occupied. I do a lot of puzzles, so sometimes if they're too easy, that can be boring. So I kind of liked this level of challenge. Um, there was like enough, like very satisfying, fairly easy parts to put together. And then there were others that I sort of had to spend a bit more time on and search and check the reference picture and, you know, but yeah, it all came together in the end and very satisfying and fun to do. Um, so I think now we should just talk about the price. Um, so I bought this on Amazon Australia and the total price, including shipping and also um, a discount with a promo code that I got in their newsletter, it came to $54.20 Australian. So I'm not sure what that is in the US, but it'd probably be less, but um, they're not selling to the US and UK right now anyway. So probably just best to wait until they do release to other markets and then sort of see what the price is. But anyway, for that price, I would consider that price to be more on the high end of puzzle prices here in Australia. Um, I've definitely seen puzzles higher than that at like $60, but probably not much more than that. Um, and I'd probably say like some of your mainstream brands at like hobby and puzzle stores here, probably around the $25 to $35 range. So this is definitely on the higher end of puzzle prices. Um, so what do you get for that price? Well, I mean, you get 
a beautiful, beautifully designed, beautiful artwork um, that I believe as well is custom designed for the company. So um, they had this commissioned especially to fit the story that they wanted to tell, which I think is really cool. So that means, you know, you're not sharing this image with any other puzzle companies, like it's exclusive to them. So that's a nice touch. Um, and of course you're paying for a really fantastic quality puzzle. Um, you know, there's definitely a lot of mainstream brands out there that the quality is not always this good. So, you know, you're definitely getting a really nice puzzle here. Um, apart from that, you know, you get obviously a nice sturdy and compact box, um, which I think would look pretty nice on displayed on a shelf and you get your reference poster. So again, I wish it was a little bit bigger. And then of course, on the other side, the reference uh, poster is information about the company, a bit about the mascot, the, the Pennywinks, and a little bit of a blurb telling you about like where the witch's lair is set, like sort of giving you a bit of background info on the realm it's set in and all that. So that's cool. Um, I mean, for the price, I think that's okay. Although personally, I think it would have been a nice touch to inc have included maybe a reusable fabric bag or at least a Ziploc bag. I mean, that's just my personal wish. Um, you know, I can understand why maybe they didn't, but you know, it would be just a nice touch to make it a little bit that little bit more special, especially for that price. Um, yeah. So I guess, I guess the other thing you're paying for as well, which is probably should have mentioned first is this is a small, uh, company. So, you know, you're paying for a small local Australian company to make, you know, a limited number of custom designed puzzles. So that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm always, you know, open to supporting local businesses and where I can. So happy to do that. Um, yeah. So would I recommend this puzzle? Absolutely. I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And if it came to purchasing it again, I would definitely do that. Um, you know, I think it's not necessarily going to be accessible to everyone for that price. But I think if you are looking to splurge or treat yourself or a gift for someone else, this is a great option. Um, you know, it's great for both kids and adults. Like I enjoyed it. I didn't find it too childish and I think kids would really have fun doing this too. So yeah. Um, and as a collector, I'm also willing to throw a bit more money at a nice puzzle like this that I can, you know, have sitting nicely on my shelf, but also redo over and over again and really enjoy it. So yeah, I think for like the price, this is like, I would recommend this. Um, and that being said, like, um, they supposedly have a couple more puzzles in the work. So I'm pretty excited to see what they're going to be like. Like I'm assuming they're going to be the same great quality and hopefully they'll also have some really fun, um, presumably custom artwork on them as well. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed this review and found it informative and useful and maybe in the comments below, let me know, is this the sort of puzzle you could see yourself doing? Um, is it on your wish list maybe? Do you like fantasy and spooky and Halloween themed puzzles? Um, yeah, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And if you want more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore GB. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye. Ta-da! Yep, holds together pretty well. <laughs>